All right, in this video, we're going to talk about um, the graphs of polynomials, in particular, what the multiplicity of the roots has to do with the graph. Um, and right now, you might not even know what multiplicity of roots is, so uh, let's talk about that. So suppose I have a polynomial that looks like this. y equals a times the quantity x minus r1 squared times x minus r2 cubed times x minus r3 to the fourth. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just tell you the multiplicities and how you refer to the zeros of this thing. So since x minus r1 is a factor, um, it's actually a factor twice, right, because it's squared, uh, we say that x equals r1 is a double root. So since uh, that's a, a factor that shows up twice, we'll have a double root, and we say that it has multiplicity 2. Okay, so it shows up twice, it's multiplied into the polynomial twice, so it has multiplicity 2. Um, and then for R3, or R2 rather, um, it's a triple root because it shows up three times. Uh, it's multiplied in three times, so it has a multiplicity of three. And then for R3, we would just say that it has a multiplicity of four. You might say that it's a quadruple root. That's, uh, it's not uncommon to say that, but it's a little weird. So um, we'll say that X equals R3 just has multiplicity of four. Um, that's a quick way of telling somebody that when they're writing their polynomial, they have to raise that factor to the fourth. Um, and in general, if we want to talk about it, we'll say that a, ro a root's multiplicity is going to be um, just equal to the power of its factor in the polynomial. So if, it, if when you write out the factored form of the polynomial, you have uh, something to the 17th power, well then the multiplicity of that root is going to be 17. And this has a lot of meaning for the graph of it. So what I'll do here is I'll just tell you the meaning, and then on the next slide I'll explain it a little more. So if a root has an even multiplicity, that's actually uh, probably the easiest case, because every root with an even multiplicity is just going to bounce off of the x-axis, or bounce on the x-axis, or bounce at the x-axis, however you want to say that. Um, and again, we'll look at graphs in a second. If the root has a multiplicity of 1, that's actually uh, just going to look kind of linear, and I say that it shoots straight through, so you're going to hear me say that a bunch. So if the multiplicity is 1, it's going to shoot straight through the axis at that point, no, no kind of curving with it, just straight through. And then uh, the last case could be roots with a higher odd power, so uh, third degree, uh, 25th degree, anything odd, so an odd multiplicity that's not one, I'm going to say that they snake through. So what happens is uh, it kind of changes shape there. It, also, it, it would shoot right through if it was one, but it's not one, so it's going to snake a little bit. Uh, so let's look at that. So I use these weird words, bounce, shoot, and snake. Um, so for example, let's say that uh, we have this. So the root is at one, um, and what I'm doing is I'm looking at an interval that's uh, one unit on either side. So between 0 and 2, 1 is the midpoint. Um, so a multiplicity of 2, you can see it's just bouncing off the axis there. Uh, if I increase the multiplicity to 4, what happens is it's still bouncing, but notice that it, it starts hugging the axis a little uh, more quickly. So uh, as you move away from 1, it stays close to 0 for a longer period of time. And in fact, if I increase the multiplicity a lot, but stay even, uh, it's still going to bounce, but what happens is on that interval, so one in either direction from the root, it gets very close to the axis very quickly. Um, and that's actually kind of interesting in terms of the graph. Um, and then we could have odd power. So here's multiplicity one. You can see it shoots straight through. Uh, it kind of looks really linear if you zoom in on the graph at that point. And then if we have a multiplicity of three, what happens is if you zoom in on the point, it's actually going to look like a cubic function. Uh, and uh, that's what I mean by snaking. So the shape of the graph actually changed. Um, if you've ever talked about concavity, it actually changes concavity there. And if we have something much higher, so the same sort of thing where it hugs the axis a lot more. Uh, so if I have a multiplicity of 19, um, an interval from uh, 1 to the left to 1 to the right of the root, so from 0 to 2, uh, it's going to hug it quite a bit. And let's talk about why briefly for that, and then in another video I'm going to do a couple of examples. So you might not be interested in why, and if you're not interested, uh, now would be a good time to stop. But why do they flatten out on the interval uh, between r minus 1 and r plus 1, where r is the root? Well, it stems from the fact that uh, the factor looks like this, 
So the factor is x minus r to the n. And then eventually, what's going to happen is that the absolute value of x minus r is going to be less than 1. And now it's all about raising numbers that are less than 1 to higher and higher powers. So what happens is, um, if the absolute value of a is less than 1, so I'm now just calling x minus r a, so if the absolute value of that is less than 1, then um, a to the n will go to 0 faster for larger values of n. So if n is bigger, you're going to get a smaller number out of a to the n. Um, so for example, let's say we have uh, x minus 2 to the n, and I let x equal uh, 2.5. So I'm just picking a number that's within 1 unit of 2. So I could have picked anything between 1 and 3, but I picked 2.5. Um, if I do 2.5 minus 2 to the n, that's really just 0.5 to the n, so I have a number that's less than 1 being raised to the nth power. So let's look at that for various powers of n. If n is 1, I get 0.5 to the 1, which is just 0.5, which is close to 0, but it's not that close to 0. On the other hand, if n is equal to 2, I have 0.5 squared, and that's 0.25, so that's a lot closer to 0. If n is 3, what I'll get is 0.5 cubed, which is 0.125, which is very close. And these are small powers of n. Uh, if n was like 50, I would have 0.5 to the 50. That's practically 0. So that's why it flattens out on that interval that's one unit to the left and the right of the root. So as n increases, this just kind of to summarize, what will happen is that a to the n is going to go to 0 uh, a lot faster. And since a to the n is going to 0 faster, the graph itself is going to flatten out. So that's why you'll see these graphs flatten out in an interval that's just one, well, it's two units wide, but one in either direction. Um, okay, so that's a little bit about multiplicity, and in the next video, what I'm going to do is a bunch of examples for you. All right, so good luck.